I've got the cheapest M1 MacBook Air and I'm comparing it with the really expensive M3 Max MacBook Pro. Today we'll explore their performance starting with the basic machine learning functions like matrix multiplication up to model training and inference. But we're not just doing CPU stuff today, oh no. We'll get into how the GPU will affect performance and also target that elusive Apple neural engine to see how much faster it'll be on the M3 Max. My exploration today is inspired by Timothy Liu's blog post and I'll show you his tools, his M1 Max MacBook Pro results and add my modest M1 MacBook Air, my daily driver M2 Max MacBook Pro and the luxurious M3 Max MacBook Pro. And no, this M3 Max is not made of gold, but it might as well be. It's expensive. I've invested in these machines, setting up the environments and running these extensive tests to compare Apple's tech from the past few years in the power hungry world of AI. I mean, uh, performance hungry. Maybe power hungry. Time will tell. We're gonna kick things off with CPU performance. For tech enthusiasts and software developers, a fast CPU means smooth multitasking and rapid code compilation. But for machine learning, matrix multiplication is one of the core functions that a CPU needs to perform well. Timothy's results for his M1 Max were quite stunning, especially for single precision or FP32, showing two teraflops for large matrix sizes. Well, hold on to your horses, Timothy, because I've got something to show you. In fact, I even had to increase the range of the chart here to accommodate the M3 Max results. In summary, the M3 Max MacBook Pro dominates in performance across all precision levels, outshining both the M1 and the M2 Max. It also surpasses the AMD Ryzen 5600X, even with MKL enabled. That's Intel's math kernel library. And that's the machine Timothy used for comparisons. Now, a central player in these calculations is a tool called NumPy, which you might've heard of. It's written in C and C++ to be really fast, but but there is a little trick that Apple Silicon has up its sleeve and that's hidden away in an AMX coprocessor embedded in the CPU. Apple lets us tap into the AMX using the Accelerate framework and if you compile NumPy to use Accelerate, things get even faster. Using the Accelerate framework significantly enhances the performance of both the M1 and M1 Max in single precision tasks while offering only moderate improvement in half and double precision tasks compared to Conda's NumPy installation, which is the basic NumPy. However, matrix multiplication is not the only thing that gets a boost here. NumPy's other key functions like random number generation, special functions, statistical functions, vector multiplication, S, V, D, whatever that is, I don't want it. The M3 Max MacBook Pro outperforms the M1 MacBook Air. <laughs> of course, in these other NumPy functions as well, showing it's much faster, especially in tough tasks like eigen decomposition and matrix multiplication, which we've already seen. And this shows how much better the new M3 Max is compared to the older M1 and actually everything in between. As a side note, I've created a video on how to compile NumPy for Accelerate along with some of these tests, and that's available exclusively for members of the channel. Thank you to the members for your support. Special content for you starts right now with that first video that's already posted. And if you're interested in joining and supporting this channel, the join button is right below. Now, there should be no surprises with the CPU improvements there. What about the GPU and all the additional cores that Apple keeps piling on? Just as a reminder, Apple Silicon's GPU cores are built into the same SOC or system on chip as the CPU. This is not a separate giant power hungry GPU card like the Nvidia RTX 3090, for example. Even so, the power consumption of Apple Silicon GPUs have been going up from the seven core GPU on the M1 MacBook Air that I have to the 32 cores on the M1 Max to the 38 cores and now we got 40 cores on the m3 max which can get up to 53 watts of power used it's still nothing compared to the 450 watts that a 4090 card can use though now to test the gpu you can use metal apis directly but we'll use timothy's scripts in the tf metal experiments repository which use metal via tensorflow making it pretty easy to integrate into existing ml workflows by the way i made my own forks of timothy's repositories which i'll link down below you can navigate to wherever you want to there i've added my own tweet and results there that's why i made my own fork so how much more teraflops can we squeeze if we switch to the gpu a lot timothy's m1 max got about eight teraflops while the m2 max and the m3 max got into the low teens our little m1 air doesn't do so well here with just 1.5 teraflops reached we love you you're a good little machine 
So how does this translate to machine learning? Well, pretty directly, actually. The M1 Max shows quite decent performance for training deep learning models. And I ran a ResNet 50 here, which is a convolutional neural network. Is it like an RTX 3090? Well, it depends what you're comparing. The M1 Max understandably has lower throughput overall, but it demonstrates impressive efficiency, offering comparable performance per watt. And my machines were all over the place here, with the little M1 managing to crunch through with just eight gigabytes of memory, even though the ResNet 50 training requires 21 gigabytes. We're not gonna look at the swap. Okay, maybe just a peek. Oh God, the swap. <clears throat> Now, how about that Apple Neural Engine, or ANE for short, or even shorter, NE? This part of the SOC is pretty undocumented. After I poked around for a bit, we can have a better guess at what Apple wants to do with it. After all, Apple's very own MLX framework that was just released doesn't seem to even take advantage of the ANE, so it makes you wonder. To tap into the ANE, we need to use Apple's Core ML, or in the case of Python, they have a convenient Core ML Tools library. We can use this to convert models to the correct format that will take advantage of the ANE. Let's start with our good friend Matrix Multiplication. Now for this test, I wanted to observe the different parts of Apple Silicon at work here. And with Core ML, you're able to target different compute units. So you can say CPU only, CPU and GPU, or CPU and NE. So here in the code using the Core ML Matmol script, we're converting the model and we're sending in the compute unit. Let's see what this looks like when we do CPU only, just for fun so we can get a comparison here. Now while it's running, I'm using Azitop, which is actually a tool that Timothy wrote himself and we've been using it a lot here. A lot of other YouTubers have been using it. Notice how the PCPU usage is at 50%. There's almost no GPU usage and no ANE usage at all here, only CPU. And we've got TOPS, which is tera operations per second at 0.0. 0.23, not that great. Frames per second, by the way, is 13.7. That means it can process 13.7 images per second. Not good. Let's change it to CPU and GPU. Back to Azitop, look at that GPU usage jumping up almost to 100%. CPU is pretty low, ANE is zero. We just have the efficiency cores of the CPU working. Most of this work is being done by the GPU. There we go, that's a much better number right there. 631 frames per second. What about that ANE? Here it's called CPU and NE. Let's run that one. Now keep an eye on this ANE right here. Look at that. Whoa, 117%? Holy cow, <laughs> that went off the scale. Wow, okay. So this GPU is not being used and the P cores and the E cores are barely being used. Well, P cores are the ones we care about, but the A and E is being used. 9.5 watts of power. It's sipping that power compared to the GPU and compared to the CPU. Terra operations per second, 12.5 frames per second, 727.6. Wow, big difference there. Now that was the M2 Max. What about our friend M1? Not too bad, 529 frames per second on the ANE, of course, and the M3 Max. Here, I was surprised to find that the result is actually less than on the M2 Max, and I did run this a couple of times. I was expecting more, but got less. Not sure why. Now it's time to put everything together and see how the ANE performs in a real world execution of a convolution operation using the ResNet 50 model. The test I'm running, benchmark Core ML Infer. We are using the CPU and NE setting here. Ready to go, and boom, there they go. Oh, M3 Max finished first, 648.7 samples per second. M1 finished second, by the way, this is not really a race, 531.8 samples per second on that one. And finally, 640 samples per second on the M2 Max. The M2 Max, not far behind the M3 Max here. I reran this on the GPU instead, and the results are considerably slower. M1 at 113.7, M2 Max 333 and M3 Max 404. Now that was a batch size of just one and the neural engine seems to be doing much better according to Timothy's blog post on any batch size that's less than 32. I reran the test with a batch size of 256 and the GPU did much better. Well, everything except the M1, which surprisingly did really well on the neural engine with batch size one and batch size 256. While the M1 MacBook Air stands out for its efficiency and affordability, it falls short in handling demanding tasks of advanced machine learning, really underscoring the divide between entry level and high end Apple Silicon machines. On the other end of the spectrum, the M3 Max MacBook Pro emerges as a powerhouse capable of tackling complex machine learning workflows, especially with the available 128 gigabytes of memory. Mine only has 64. 
It may not be as fast as an RTX 4090, but it's more reliable for larger models due to the unified memory architecture. For instance, models like the Mixtrol 8x7 that just recently was released, it needs about 100 gigabytes of memory to run, and that challenges even the 128 gigabyte max. My own trials to run it on a 64 gigabyte machine were unsuccessful, and it's a tight squeeze even on the 128 gigabyte versions, provided you turn off everything else on the machine. Apple's MLX framework that was just released targets machine learning workflows, and this really shows that Apple is serious about taking on the AI field and making it accessible. I put that in quotes because, well, high-end Macs are expensive and will continue to be more and more expensive. But when you compare to the NVIDIA A100 GPU, for example, with 80 gigabytes of RAM, and that costs $18,000, well, these start to look like a bargain. Check out my previous video for a deep dive into machine learning where I compare MacBooks, MacBook Studio, and even NVIDIA cards, and subscribe for more insights in my upcoming content. I'll see you later, folks.